Hello, and we have this this another problem um, regarding what is, what is this the, regard regarding uh, Newton's laws of motion. And in this problem, it says two blocks each of mass m are connected by a string of constant length 4h. Or I mean, well, well, this says 3h. Like like in the diagram, it says 3h. So I just drew I just copied the diagram, but it says 4h. Well, I mean, this is H, so I guess that is 4H. Yeah, okay, and negligible mass. So block A is placed on a smooth tabletop, as shown as above, or down here, and block B hangs over the, ta over the edge of the table like this. So the tabletop is a distance 2H above the top floor, and block B is then released from rest at a distance H above the floor at time T equals 0. So I guess it's, it's released when it's at rest. Okay. So it says express all algebraic answers in terms of h, m, and g. So what what this means is that you wanna you wanna um, write it out, write the answer out in an algebraic form. So for example, if you if you wanted to find like if if the first one is like acceleration and and let's say the acceleration is like force times force times mass, you would just write for fm, for force times mass. But then we have to explain it time, uh, we have to explain it using these, these variables right here. So fm is not going to be correct. So let's, let's see how we do a, let's see how we do a. Okay, let's bring this down a little bit. Okay, and we have, we have a. So determine the acceleration of block a, block a as it descends. Is that is that block block A? Okay, all right. So that is block A. So one thing to notice here is that these two blocks have the same mass. So that that simplifies things a lot. And and let let's draw a little free body diagram for block B because I just want to look at block B right now. So this, the downward force of block B is mg, and that's also weight, but the same thing as mg. And and there's a tension. The tension, but uh, we're we're just concerned with the m. Yeah, so so this is a tension of uh, t, but yeah, and, and we have mg here. So mg is a force that is a that is um that is um acting upon upon the whole system because this is the only only object that is being affected by gravity. So so how do we calculate the acceleration? Well. If you recall from other examples, we take the we take the force of the the hanging object, and then and then you so force of the hanging object force of the hanging object, and then you take the total mass mass times acceleration. So you you take so in here it's like it, it's represented like that. So you just divide the mass of the to, the total mass divided by the force of the hanging object. So what is what is the force of the hanging object? Well, it's mg mg. And what is what is the mass of the total total system? It's it's m plus m or 2m. m plus m is 2m and then that times a. So you just divide each side by 2m to 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 find acceleration. So what you would do is mg over 2m and then these m's will cancel out, so this is equal to a. And then these these m's will cancel out, and we are left with g over two. So that is that is acceleration. That's acceleration. Okay, that is that is acceleration of block A, as the, as block B descends. That's what that's what this is saying. Okay, let's go to let's go to the second problem. In the second problem, we have. It says block B strikes the floor and does not bounce. So this goes to the point. Okay, and determine the time t equals t1 at which block B strikes the floor. So what this is saying is how long does it take for B to B to hit the ground? Um, and how do we figure that out? Well, let's let's. Well, we have we have our acceleration, and we know v. Well, we can we can use kinematic equations. Let's see. So delta y, delta y, if you recall from the earlier chapters, uh, is equal to one half a t squared. 
plus V naught, but okay, plus V naught, but V naught T, but V naught V naught is zero, so we're just gonna we're just gonna uh, ignore that part. Okay, well, what what is delta Y in this context? Well, it's H because M is only moving down to the ground, and that's H, so this is just gonna be H, and one half one half. And what is acceleration? We have to find acceleration here using g over 2. So, so, okay, just checking my mic. Okay, so acceleration is g over 2. Now, what is t? t, we, we do not know t, so it's just going to be t squared. We're trying to find the, the equation for t. Now we, now we solve for t. How do we do that? Well, if you simplify this, this is going to be h is equal to g over 4 because 2 times 2 is 4 and then t squared and then if you multiply by the reciprocal of this to cancel it out on each side so you multiply this side by 4 over let me use a different color so 4 over 4 over g and you multiply this side by 4 over g 4 over g this this cancels out this cancels out and and you're left with h 4 h times 4 g is equal to t squared now if you take if you take the square root of both sides we get t left so when you take the square root of 4 the 4 comes out so so it's going to be 2 and since this h is the same thing as h over 1 this is just going to be square root of h over g is equal to t now how do you input that into the into the WebAssign box. Well, you just you just write two square two times square root of h over uh, h over g. That that's how you input it. Like square root is is square root, and then you just put whatever is in the square root inside the parentheses. So so that's that's how you enter that. Okay, let's go uh, let's go to the last problem. Um, and it says determine the distance between the landing points of the two blocks. Well, we can use the kinematic equations again, but for this one, we we're, we're gonna try. We're gonna have to figure out. Okay, let, 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 let's let's look at our concepts real quick. So if if B moves down and accelerates down and hits the ground, the at the moment B hits the ground, A would be traveling this way. At a constant velocity from then on, because it's uh, because friction is negligible, so it's going to be moving that way at v, um, because the final velocity when the b hits the ground is going to be v, so it's going to be moving at v. Okay, so let's look at here. So how do we calculate that? So we have a kinematic equation that is a is equal to v minus v naught over t if you recall from one of the earliest chapters um, and we have what do we have we have a here and we have t here and we know that v naught is zero because it's because it starts at rest so so we have everything that we need to solve for v so let's let's do that okay so a is g over two and t t is what is t t is 2 2 times 2 times h over g and v naught is 0 so it's just going to be it's just going to be v and how do you solve for v well we multiply each side by this bottom the denominator here so it's so so if we uh, uh, give me one second let me let me extend let me extend this this thing so I can go down more 6,000 okay Crap. I did it oh that was a width okay so 3,000 I'm gonna go down more okay so so if we multiply each side it's gonna be g over 2 times 2 times h over g is equal to v right Okay, and the two cancels out, so it's just gonna be it's just gonna be g times h over g is equal to v. Okay, and if you recall from the earlier, well, it says determine. Well, that's that's the 
we, we just found the equation for the moment that B hits the ground and that's the V that's how that's the how fast mass a the object a leaves the table so that's going to be v naught for for mass a or object a when it leaves the table so how do you, how do we calculate the x the change in x well if you recall from one of the earliest earlier chapters it's just going to be v naught t so since v is equal to v naught for the um for the mass a we can just uh, substitute this part into here and t is here so we substitute that in there and then we can calculate for for our x for our delta x I'm sure there's an easier way but this is how I did it so um, so delta x v naught so g g square root of h over g times t which is which is 2 times h over g and this is simplifiable because we have square root of h over g times the square root of h over g which is just going to be h over g so just h over g times 2 and these g cancel out so we're just left with 2h 2h so our x displacement is 2h and that is our answer and I'm sure some of you can can figure out figure it out from looking at this and and see that see that it's uh see that it's gonna be two h right off the bat, but this is this is how I did it and how and I used the physics to to show how I I got two h from this, so I hope I didn't confuse you too much here, um, and good luck on the test, which is in like a week or two.